again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> yes. Mid-August. Beautiful out. I'm, I'm still in the how is it August phase of my life. I'm I, like, what? We have the primary coming up yeah, in like, like a three. month. In, yeah, less than a month. Right? I think the primary is on the 10th, so right? less than a month. So that's um, funny because I thought it was on 9-11 because I know the election election is on the 5th of November. And I was like, remember what him? timeline is this <laughs> if we have like the primary on 9-11 and then remember, remember, remember the November. 5th of November. Yeah. But it's not. It's on the 10th. Tuesday, the to, yes. 10th of September yes. will be the primaries. Yes. And then the 5th of November, obviously, is the... The, the big, big thing. Did you catch the Trump Elon um, Musk thing? Some of it. So we were listening to some of it, and then Dan was trying to find it yesterday to re-listen to, and then, I don't know, we probably, we so, both so tend I, to get sidetracked and find other things, you know, I and know. next thing I knew he was looking at, you know, See, that know. is attention deficiency, well, because we, I, I find it happens to me too. I, I went to this personal growth workshop-y kind of thing hmm. on Friday night, uh, uh, as a uh, sort of courtesy to someone mm -hmm. and there was a really big turnout maybe like 60 70 people mm. and two things so I was like oh there's probably a real need for for personal growth work and stuff and I don't remember the second one <laughs> or how oh the attention deficiency so one of the things someone said was one of their goals was, I want to finish books. Like, I start books and I then I just put them down. I always get to, like, well, I rarely finish a book. I rarely read, like it or not, that I was not a reader as a child. Like, te have your kids read because then you're, as an adult, you're a reader. But I notice a lot of times I get to, like, 85%, and I'm like, okay, I get it now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, probably till I was in my mid-40s, I felt that it was my duty as a human to finish every book I started. And then I was like, okay, maybe <laughs> like life's too short for this little yeah. mission you are on here, Carla. So I stopped doing that. But this kid said um, he wants to finish his book, you know, finish reading, reading stuff. Fair. And it resonated with me on the level of, wow, I wonder if I can for a week just finish an article. If I start reading an article, can I read to the end of the article? And yeah. guys, it's hard when it's you're not. Hard. I can't yeah. do it. Like I have to consciously now be like, well, Carla, I you didn't feel like that. What ha what's happening because we've got renovations going on in two houses. There's like a million things, and I'm a very big advocate of lists. Right. I have, <laughs> I have Google Keep lists. I have paper lists. You know, there's. And they often duplicate each other, but there's different reasons for having different ones. You know, like it, it, different lists work for me for different things. And um, so that's what I think will happen. Like Dan might be on YouTube going out to see the Elon Musk thing, and then he sees something in his right. feed about, you know, wood stoves. The next thing I know, he's telling me about a certain type of wood stove. Right, and of course, because the advertising is also knows it's dead, yep. knows yeah. actually that you're remodeling in two places yeah. based on what you're ordering and what you're looking at yeah. and what you're searching at and all of yep. that, right? So it is part of the point is the system right. is, is designed is to steal to your you. attention. Yep. And so it's like our job to cognitively and purposefully be like, no, no, but it's so It is. Hard. I mean, I, I, it sounds silly because I feel like I'm making these like incredibly detailed, silly lists. But every time I go out to the house in Wakefield, I've got like, okay, because otherwise I'll totally be just, there's so many things I could be doing. Right. So I'm like, okay, I need to wipe down the bedroom window and then I need to spackle the bedroom and then I need to do this and then I need to sand the spackle, you know, like so that it may be. <laughs> Check, 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 check. Right. You know, like, otherwise, I'll come home and I'll be like, damn it, I didn't measure that freaking cabinet again. And, right. oh, crap, I didn't <laughs> do any of this back then. So, yes, yeah, so our attentions are being stolen. The reason I asked about the Trump thing is I have not It was the bits I heard yet, were good. But it occurred to me, because I tried to log on maybe at, like, 8 to 18. There was a little bit of a And there, there was, was a technical yeah. stuff, so I couldn't get on. But then I thought, you know, it's so interesting from a free speech perspective, right? Is the more you allow people to talk and to get their ideas out there and to not treat people like life is a sound bite, mm -hmm. because where we direct our attention is important, right? So in politics, they want you to just think the extreme things because yep. they're going to give you a sound yep. bite, and that's supposed to like evoke yeah. something and then you you know your entire being is inflamed in some way and then you go down 
and you know do whatever right. you're supposed to do for that politician. But then I thought, wow, three hours of like probably one of the world's smartest men, that's not Trump, uh, and Trump, right? And allowing a conversation. Just an actual conversation. Because what happens when you allow people to actually speak is most people go, oh. I didn't know. Okay. I, or I didn't know. I, 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 actually, that sounds kind of right. reasonable. Or that isn't as weird as I thought it was. Right. Or maybe that's not quite as crazy as yep. it seems. Well, that's like Victoria right? was cor uh, telling me about, she was out knocking on doors the other day and she came across somebody's door and they were Republican and she, um, you know, she gave him the literature and he handed it back to her. And from what she could ascertain, you know, the guy was a, a gay individual, which is irrelevant from like my perspective, I could care less. From Victoria's perspective, could care less. But he had it in his head that because she was a, supporting Trump, because she was going to vote for Trump, she was identical to Trump. And she said, mm, no. She said, I'll tell you, the one big thing that makes me vote, say I'm voting for Trump is, I do not want to go into war, she said, because I have two boys that are of draft age and I am not going to vote for anybody that could put them at risk of having to go to war. Like, and I was like, simple. And then she talked about like, I don't care if you're gay. I don't care who you love. That's not my, I have nothing to do with it. And she said he did say, you know, she and even, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think Trump is homophobic. No, 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 I mean, I'm just saying, so... but people get things in their head that every, he had it in his head that if you're supporting Trump, you don't want him to be able to choose who he loves. And she goes, I, not you see, at no, all. And, and a lot of that is just manufactured right? and on she, social she media. She went on Did... about how, like, there's gays for groomers. And she said, I don't think children should be exposed to sexually explicit materials. And he said, well, I think children should be exposed to everything. And she said, well, I don't. And, you know, gays for groomers are gay people who set up and said, wait, this is getting too much. She, she left it at, like, how about you go back, you read from some of their stuff, and you reach back out to me, and we'll come back, and we'll have more of this conversation. Because it's like, no, you need to understand, we're both saying the same thing. You just got it in your head that you have to dislike me. <laughs> And you should be suspicious if you have that feeling where you're like, I know nothing about this person, but I'm just going to hate on them. Right. That's sus, and you should really like um, uh, consider that. On the on the on the candidates and campaigns and stuff with the primary approaching, um, and a lot of these people might not have a primary, but that doesn't mean you can't support them anyways. I mean, even the candidates that don't have a primary. Um, need your support, you know, need your sign locations. Definitely if you're, uh, especially with the Senate candidates, they need your financial support because, you know, campaign races over multiple wards in multiple towns costs yeah. a lot of money. Sure so, does. So um, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, I'm a lifetime member of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. I'm going to guess that you probably are as well, um, is always a place that I look to to see who they're supporting and who they're not. Um, there's other organizations, AFP puts out endorsements, you know, for, this is from the conservative, more Republican leaning side of things. Um, usually Right to Work does endorsements and the NRA eventually does endorsements. I did see uh, Granite State taxpayers did theirs that came out on Monday, I believe. So and it's hard because when you're a candidate, couple things, you don't always see the survey especially if it was sent in an email and you were supposed to click through uh, like and so the pile of mail and you then get. what happens is you don't fill out their survey because you didn't know you had to right or you get it in the mail and you miss the deadline and then you go you see an endorsement list and you try to go back and say hey i didn't i missed it some organizations are like, oh, well, too bad, we're done now, which I don't think actually helps their purpose. No, and it doesn't help the voters. Right, right? Like, like if your like goal really, is your to really is to tell people who, voters, right, then... if you're saying, sorry, you know, uh, we missed, we did that on August 4th and too bad for you. So the NHLA puts out their, they put out their first round and they will do subsequent rounds. Um, so I thought from the interest. <laughs> I'm like, I definitely haven't completed something for them and well, I hope I'm on a well, list or not thing. on a list. Like, I, I don't I even know never, anymore. I would never think I would have to fill out an NHLA <laughs> survey, right? So in, these are only the people, um, 
pertaining to Manchester, so keep that in mind. Um, in the Senate races, they have endorsed Keith Murphy and Victoria Sullivan. So Keith is Manchester's Ward 1. Uh, Victoria is 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in Manchester. They both also have towns that they are covering. Um, so that's really good to see that we have two um, Liberty Endor, New Hampshire Liberty endorsed Senate candidates here in Manchester. Makes me happy. Um, then if we get over to the state rep races, um, in Ward 8, in the rep district that just is Ward 8, um, you have Mark McClain. He's one of my favorite reps. Um, he's an incumbent looking for re-election. Um, he's been there probably four terms, I want to say. He's been there a bunch. He's, he's a a, he, he's really awesome. smart um, guy. You know, like, I, should probably, I don't always 100% agree with him, but he, 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 does his re, he does a lot of research. He reads. He doesn't just vote willy-nilly. He yep. knows what the heck he's looking. His website is McLean for staterep.com. You can go there and support him. Then Larry Gagney, love Larry Gagney. He's in Ward 6. Um, I don't have, there's no website for him. Uh, Larry's a longtime incumbent. Um, I served with him. He's just awesome as well. Um, two, two relatively new, well, I, one is new. Um, in my ward, Ward 10, uh, Matt Drew. I don't know him. I know his signs are popping up. I saw that there was literature left on my deck porch. Um, so Matt Drew in... Um, Ward 10 and Pierre Dupont in Ward 9. So that's good. And then if you get to the floaterials, because you know, we like to keep things confusing. Mark Warden is in the Ward 689 floaterial. Mark's an awesome uh, former rep. He served in Ward 8. He served in Goffstown. He's got a great uh, voting record. His website is markwarden.com. Um, and then Carla is in the Hillsborough, actually Carla and Andre Rose uh, in Hillsborough District 40. And Alex Kronz, I believe, is not, also running there. He may not no, be but endorsed. I'm just talking but. about who's, in, who's been endorsed so far. So that is, covers Manchester Ward 1, 3, 10, 11, 12. So the west side, downtown, and the north end. Um, Carla, you can find her on Facebook. Carla, Car well, you can NHS find me Center. at Carla yeah. I'm just going by website. what they what <laughs> sure, they have but listed. I'm here, so yeah. if I could get a I word like, in, hmm. I would tell you um, my website. And Andre, I don't have anything for him, but I'm sure you can find him on Facebook as well. And then we have Ryan Heber, which is in the Hillsborough District 41, which is wards two, four, five, and seven. So I don't really know him either. I so. don't know because right. it's funny always in New Hampshire because everyone has such similar names. I'm I like, know. there's a is different Ryan Heber, Heber no, running. Is it the good one? Um, a bad one. I think there's a lot of people who just get voted in over time I where mean, it's like, so you can, maybe I'll change my last name you, to Gagnon. You can find, <laughs> Dan always jokes about changing to Moral, which is his mother's French name, whatever. <laughs> um, you can get Keith Murphy's website at murphy4nh.com and Victoria Sullivan's website is victoriasullivan4nh.com and I do want to make a shameless plug. Victoria is doing a fundraiser next Wednesday, August 21st at Chunky's. Um, doors open at five. I believe the movie starts at six. She's showing Hillbilly Elegy, which is the movie version of um, J.D. Vance's um, memoir. Memoir. Thank you. Um, tickets for individuals, $20.24 since it's 2024. Oh, that's cute. And if you're a couple or a pair of friends or whatever, um, $30 for two people. Um, that's a great fundraiser. That's fun. And you get to see a movie. I don't really know that much about J.D. Vance. Um, I actually read the book when it came out, yeah. and I want to say I read it or it came to my attention from my writing world, mm. so from more yeah. the literary, you know, MFA world. Uh, so it was lauded as a, it was a great, you know, yeah. memoir. I remember it being actually like, you know, like, I mean, like NPR, yeah. book TV kind of level. People were like, this is a great book. And then if you think about it, if you look back, what, maybe it's 10, 15 years. I forget when it came out. But now, you know, now it's like, this guy's the devil. No, you know what's funny? I watched him. Did you happen to see the clip? It was priceless. So Kamala's plane lands someplace. And she's in the plane, and she's in the plane, and they're, you know, the reporters are all out on the tarmac waiting, 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 like for endless. And meanwhile, JD Vance comes walking off with his people, and he goes <laughs> over to the press, and he's like, well, I don't know where she is or why she's not coming off her plane, but you can talk to me instead. And he was just, and I thought, yeah, she's gonna, yeah. It's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I, I think part of the issue is 
some of these politicians are kind of robots. They're not actually individuals or people who have principles or right. who understand what they think. You know, to, to make the point about these campaign surveys that we get, and guys, I mean, I'm talking about, I think they destroy some, you know, forests just for this, like, nonsense uh, generated stuff. In right. fact, I tweeted this morning and I said, you know, maybe we should start to talk about big get out the vote, right? In the same way we talk about big ag or big right, pharma right. or big tech or and big bro, of course, which is just kind of the deep state itself. But there is so much money that is around the elections, right? Like if we take PAC money and all of that, that in the same way we talk about how could we reform an NGO, right? Like, right. or how do we fix a poverty program because if we put in the wrong incentives, we get more, more homeless right, right, people right. instead of less, right? And then we talked about how, but some of these industries, it's like the jobs are, it's a jobs program. Yes, you know what I yes. mean? Like people are getting paid nice little salaries right. from grants, from money printed money that causes the inflation to just have a job. And I think there's a lot in elections that is just around that. Like I would love to see numbers and be like, how much money are we spending on this clown show? And yeah. can we just take it and divide it by 330 million people and just give the money yeah. to people and be like, rule yourselves, guys. Um, <laughs> not to, just jumping because my brain's jumping back to that attention thing. So did you see there was another big fire in the in a homeless encampment down in the south end behind all all dogs gym area? So oh down. yeah yeah. And you know a lot of people are. I'm always interested to see the comments because sometimes it leans, oh, the poor, poor homeless people, and other times it's like, what the hell? And this one seemed to be more of the what the hell, like what is going on? How you know, like, because there's ex little explosions because propane tanks are, yep. and the fire department had to trudge into the woods. Like it was not easy. And I thought, yeah, you know, at some point we have to do something. Like what do we do? So I say to Dan, and, and I mean, I sound. I, I can sound like an ogre to some people when I say things like this, but I'm like, how about this? How about the government? Because the government's spending endless money. So some nonprofit or whoever, you know, they rent out the Shaws on South Willow Street because that's centrally located, right? And you put in cubicle walls. And I'm not talking floor to ceiling cubicles. I'm talking like maybe five, four foot. No privacy. We're not talking. Granton size. You know, we're talking. Dudler Mifflin. Enough so that cubicles. when you're sleeping, you're, you're not visible. Put a little bed in there. Give them a, you know, a nightstand, a little dresser or a nightstand or whatever. And every person has to choose where they would like to go. You can go into rehab if you have a drug problem. You can, you know, go wherever with that. Or you go to the facility. And the facility has a whole lot of rules. And that's just too bad because you've got to figure out which of the, you can't just live on the street. That's not one of the rules. That's not allowed. And if you have a mental Ill, Ill, health issue, we should be getting you help and putting you in those facilities or those treatment programs. If you have a drug problem, but, but the rest of there, there's a guy standing out here on, on I saw him. he yeah, does I not look yeah. unable to work. I'm sorry. I've seen him there a couple times. He looks able-bodied. You can't stand on the corner begging. You got to go, you got to pick one. And if you can't follow, and then gives incentives to the people who are do, like, hey, I'm living in my little four foot wall cubicle and I follow all the rules and I help serve breakfast and I do this and I do that. So maybe you get to move to an, a full blown eight foot cubicle with a little more pride, with a door or something, you know, like incentivize improving your life. But this doesn't mean you get the gourmet meals. You know what? When I was a kid, we ate toast for breakfast, toast. So maybe toast is the breakfast and maybe, you know, soup is the lunch and maybe ham sandwich or bologna sandwich is the dinner, but at least it's food and there's water available all day long and maybe there's coffee and maybe somebody out of the goodness of their heart donates some food, but whatever. I'm tired of saying, what are they going to do? Well, I mean, I think that that sounds like a feasible plan. The question is, why can't someone just start it and try it? Of course, well, because you can, there'll be because regulations there are, about yes, sprinklers I, I, and how many toilets there have I, to be. I so we have no toilets in the woods, right. but two toilets in a building is not better. Right. It's it's. I mean, none of it makes sense no. anymore. I'm quite. I'm convinced they 
ran all the legislation through the AI and the AI was like, nothing you guys are doing makes any sense. It's you just should so stop. frustrating because it's, it's not fair to the taxpayer to keep funding the, all these emergencies. It's not really fair to the people who I think would improve their lives with the right help because even if there's a ton of different help, Keep getting well, so part of the issue, I think, and something that we're not really grappling with, or I don't think people are framing the right way, is the mental health mm -hmm. issues. So basically what happened, and this was under Reagan, right? They closed they, most of the yep. nut houses. And they it, closed them because they were in mo appalling yep, conditions. Yep. There were tons of documentaries yep. and stories and memoirs and people being court treated cases poorly. where it's like, whoa, society was not doing a great job dealing with these people. But then the solution was, was the we're other just going to put you right. out on the street. And so what we have now, I think, in some ways, is a battle between the public spaces and private spaces. So you own your own house, your castle is your home, we all understand what private property rights are. Then, as a society, we share the, the public, the commons, right? right? But the commons is now becoming the lunatic yeah. asylum because we're saying, but you can, these people who legitimately may or may not have a problem. So right. Most of them have alcoholism, addiction, yep. some kind of childhood trauma they haven't dealt all sorts with. Of things. And, you know, PTSD, we make them in the wars, yep. all of it, right? So there are legitimate reasons why this category of people are the way they are. But what we can't do as a society is say, these people get to define what the world looks like, right. and we have to have the streets of our country them. be a lunatic asylum. No. That is not you know, a reasonable if accommodation. If you can't function, if you're given opportunities to function better, especially if you're given opportunities to function better, which if you have a drug addiction, which might be leading to a mental health problem, you have to be willing to do improve. the steps. You, you so gotta be I willing. don't mean that like in a 12 step no, way, you but gotta like do you have it. to go from here to there. You can't just stay here forever. Well, you can, you're probably gonna die on the street and why, right? And you know, if you can't, there are people who can't. I mean, there are people who can't function. And you see some of them and you're like, there's one poor man, he walks around and I see him and I think, he obviously has an, a mental issue. And I always hope that he lives in some sort of facility and he's just out walking when I see him because he looks very clean and whatnot. So I assume he goes back to some place where someone's caring for him. But if you can't or won't, maybe, you know, like, I always say it and people go, you can't say that. And I'm like, but you can. And it's like, if there was an island in the middle of Manchester that you could keep people on to build a little village so that they could have some freedoms, but they were contained, that would work. Well, but you see, can't you do could, that because that, Well, you know. but you could solve that canard, that problem with property rights. So you could, if there weren't these barriers to entry where the government says, actually, we're not going to do a good job. We're going to say, we've got to do it. And if you want to do it, we're going to make it so hard for you to do yeah. it, right? Then, you know, so there's a disincentive for private people to try and solve these problems. They destroyed the churches that were doing yeah. it. Yeah. So all of that, right? Now the state has stepped up, but they're not doing it the right way and they won't let the other people. But in your scenario, if you had a private island, you could have, I'll say, Dean Kamen's private island right. for uh, juvenile delinquents. Right. Okay, just and as a, a like, wild example. There. And there are a hundred beds, but it's private. And it's and so you have a private contract and you have to agree to these things, right? But that gets you out of the woods and uh, into, into a bed. So so you know, in this thing which we have talked about ad nauseum, you also have to factor in the individual. So you can't talk about the homeless right. and then get you manipulated into you have to talk, talk about, about this guy, guy on the corner and how do what's we solve wrong with him? him and how do we yes. How do we get Joe? So to not be standing on the corner. Back to individualism, right? So someone asked on, on uh, X this week, they said something about, what is a cult that people are in that they don't know they're in? And I said, the cult of statism, the cult of the state, which is the cult of the greater good, right? So everyone tells you, oh, this is for the greater good, it's mm, for the public, it's for whatever. 
And I was like, no, the, uh, so that's like a bad cult that you're in, that you don't know you're in, that you should really analyze and think about. But the ultimate cult, in my opinion, would be you know, the cult of one. It is the cult of the greatest good, which is the cult of individualism. Because society is not something, it is made up of right. Right. humans one at a time. And that is what we need to remember. Yep. No, there's a lot. It's just, it, I, it's, I get, fr I feel bad when I read the, so many comments and people are as frustrated as they are. Um, because I, and sometimes people are putting the blame in the wrong place. You know, like they think that this one's doing nothing. Like, you know, people are complaining because the city is diverting a certain amount of money to create beds for eight women. So eight women's more permanent shelter bedding. And I'm like, I, I, but then I, also, but I'm, I'm like, but it's eight. Let's get eight. But then they're also talking about. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. They're going to do this new um, juvenile center, which in the two years that they've been dragging their feet, because things shouldn't take two years. Right. We can do things in three weeks. Right. That Shaw's or Hennifer's right. or whatever's literally been on the market for, for seven 10 years. Ten years, whatever. Like, right. Come on, we can do better. But um, yeah, they just uh, we. I got the time warning, so I, I suppose it's, we uh, need to wrap we, up. We, 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 go, we, we feel your, everybody's frustration. We have the same frustrations, and it, they're legitimate. And I, I, I hope that some of the things that I see happening are improving things. Sometimes I see things happening, and I think it's more about this than about actually changing things. But I want to give a shout out to, I believe it's the Manchester Parks Department came and took those tires that we dug Yay. out of the swamp and made a In giant the pile of. River Park. It's gone. It looks beautiful. It Thank you. We are very grateful. Yes. It is a great park. If you and want to get out and take a walk. I think we have to stop telling okay. people how great it, it is. is. I know. But if you want to take a really <laughs> nice walk, go to Precourt Street on the west side and go down to the um, Piscataqua River Park, park your car, walk the trail, at least to the bridge and back. It's so peaceful. We did it last but night. But then speaking of people who just, you know, I was like, what? Some guy set up his tent with a pop-up over it on the beach that clearly all the families use. There are tons of dogs, and the dude's just hanging out there. And I was like, like yeah, uh -uh, you're abusing not things for a long. Yeah. long. Sorry, Sammy. Anyways, <laughs> Piscataquag.org, P-I-S-C. P I S C A T A Q U O G dot org is the Friends of Piscataqua River Park. And you can find me at carlagarrick.com and we'll be back next, next week. week. Bye, Bye, guys. <laughs>